All right, to wrap up our discussion on energy for Gen Chem 1, we want to talk about heats of formation. And as we've been saying in all these videos, heat is a form of energy. Uh, if you're at constant pressure, heat is an enthalpy. And so heat's a formation and enthalpy a formation, exactly the same thing. So you may see it written as an enthalpy of formation rather than a heat of formation, means exactly the same thing. Now, an enthalpy of formation or heat of formation is an indication that you have a delta H for a particular kind of reaction called a formation reaction. We usually use little subscripts on our delta H's to indicate specific types of reactions. And so in this case, if we see a little F subscript on our delta H, we're talking about a formation reaction. Often we'll see the little not symbol. Uh, almost always we'll see the little not symbol and that simply means a standard heat of formation or a standard enthalpy of formation which means we're under standard conditions for thermodynamics which includes 25 degrees Celsius, one bar of pressure which is very very close to one atmosphere and all aqueous solutions are one molarity. So these are our standard conditions for thermodynamics. So a standard enthalpy of formation, a standard heat of formation we're talking about a chemical reaction in which we are under standard conditions. So let's talk about the formation reaction itself in a little more detail. A reaction that forms something is a formation reaction. So we can be talking, let's start off kind of simple. Let's talk about the formation of methane, CH4. Uh, at room temperature, methane's a gas, so let's talk about forming methane, which is a gas. Now very specifically, if we're talking about a formation reaction, we're talking about forming it from the elements that make it up in their elemental states. And so carbon is one of the elements that makes up CH4. Carbon is a solid at room temperature and pressure, which is what these are, room temperature and pressure. And hydrogen is diatomic. You have to remember the diatomic elements, and it's a gas. So carbon and H2 are the two elements that make up CH4. To balance it, we need two H2s. Now it's very important that we have one of these products. In this case, that's a no-brainer. That's what we have. Uh, but we'll see in a minute that in order for it to be considered a formation reaction under these conditions, we have one product. So this reaction describes the formation of CH4 from the elements in their elemental states. And the delta H for this reaction is called the enthalpy of formation for methane. And we can look it up. You probably have a table of enthalpies of formation in your textbook. But if you don't, you can look up enthalpy of formation for methane. Oops, well, this might get us. This is the Wikipedia entry for enthalpies of formation. Let's go down and see if they've got methane. I don't see methane. There we go. Standard enthalpy change of formation, delta H, they've got the little sub on the F, is negative 74.87 kilojoules per mole. What this means is if this reaction proceeds, it will release, that's the negative sign, 74.87 kilojoules for every one mole of CH4 that is formed. Now if we look this up in other tables, if we find other tables for the enthalpy of formation of methane, we might not get exactly 74.87. These are experimental values, and so different tables may list slightly different values. Um, if you're doing textbook problems, you want to use the tables in the textbook. Um, so for example, let's, let's see if we can find a different or slightly different value. All right, this table, just one of my Google searches, has some standard enthalpies of formation. So delta H sub F in kilojoules per mole, this first column. The second column is kilocalories per mole. If we look at the kilojoules per mole and we come down to methane, CH4, he's right there, we see negative 74.81. Slightly different, but it's not too far off. And so here are a variety of enthalpies of formation of various substances. You'll notice, for example, Br2 liquid, the enthalpy of formation is zero. Now let's come back over here and let's talk about why that is. If I want to write the reaction for the enthalpy of formation of Br2, I'm talking about the reaction that forms Br2 liquid 
from the elements in their elemental states. And the element that makes up bromine is bromine, and its elemental state is diatomic, and at room temperature, bromine is a liquid. So I essentially am writing the reaction where the reactants and the products are exactly the same, and that's not a reaction. The delta H for that process, the energy change for that process is zero because there is no process happening. So enthalpy is a formation of elements already in their elemental state. The delta H of formation is zero. All right, so that's what an enthalpy of formation means. Let's do one more. I can write the enthalpy of formation of water. Let's say we're doing it for liquid water. Now the elements that make up water are hydrogen, which is diatomic, and gas, and oxygen, which is diatomic and gas. If we balance this the way we balanced it back when we learned to balance reactions, we don't want fractions. Two hydrogens, two oxygens. I'd put a two here, which means I need a two there. But this reaction as written, there's only one O2. This reaction as written is not a proper formation reaction. If we look up a delta H of formation of water liquid, the delta H value in that table will not be for this reaction. It will be for this reaction. The delta H of formation of water implies that I'm looking at the reaction where I form one water from the elements in their elemental state, and I absolutely might need fractions. So essentially, I'm taking the normally balanced reaction and I'm dividing everybody by two. And so if I look up the enthalpy of formation for liquid water, let's go back to one of our tables over here. Here we go, right on top, H2O gas, H2O liquid. H2O liquid has a delta H in kilojoules per mole of negative 285.8. That is the enthalpy of formation to form liquid water from the elements in their elemental state. It is per mole of H2O, and that's why I need one in that balanced product reaction. Um, if I'm writing the reaction to form gaseous water, it would be exactly the same reactants, but now my product would be a gas, H2O gas, and that enthalpy of formation value is slightly different. And so you do have to pay attention to your states. The formation of H2O gas is only negative 241.818, so it's slightly different than the enthalpy of formation of liquid water. The state does matter. Now one of the most useful things about the enthalpies of formation is in calculating a delta H for a reaction using these enthalpies of formation. So let's set up a problem like that and, and talk about where we get it. All right, this is the combustion of C2H4. C2H4 um, has the, uh, the name ethylene. A combustion reaction, if you're starting with a hydrocarbon, something with only carbons and hydrogens, will always produce CO2 and water, CO2 and H2O, as long as it's a complete combustion. To balance this reaction, I need two carbons. I need four hydrogens, and that gives me four plus two is six oxygens. There is a one in front of the C2H4, but I don't have to write it. Now this is a combustion reaction. I could run this reaction in a, in a bomb calorimeter, and I could figure out how much heat it gives off by using the calorimeter water to absorb the energy and calculate um, like a calorimetry problem. Uh, but I might not want to go to that trouble. I might want to figure out what the delta H for this reaction is what the delta H for this reaction is just kind of quickly and because enthalpy is a state function, it's not a path function, I can figure out what the enthalpy of this reaction is, what the enthalpy change is, simply by using a series of formation reactions for each of the reactants and products. I can think of this reaction, now that, now that you've learned about Hess's law, where you add reactions together and then you add the delta H's, I can think of this as a formation reaction of CO2, and I can look up the delta H for that, um, for the formation of CO2 gas. I'll have to multiply it times two because there are two CO2s. Then I can look up the formation reaction for water gas, and again I'll have to multiply it times two because there are two waters. And then I can look up the formation reaction for C2H4. Now, if I look up the formation reaction for C2H4, that's the reaction that forms C2H4. C2H4 isn't in my products, it's in my reactants. So I'd like that reaction backwards. 
So actually, I'm looking for the negative delta H of formation of that. I'm going to flip the sign on the enthalpy of formation of C2H4. And again, here's oxygen. I want to look up the formation of O2 gas. But again, I'm going to want the opposite of the enthalpy of formation for that. So I need the enthalpy of formation for the CO2 and the H2O. Oops. For the CO2 and the H2O, straight out of the tables. I'll have to multiply each by two because of those numbers. I have to multiply oxygens by three. I missed that. There we go. Um, I'll look up the formation, enthalpy of formation or heats of formation for C2H4 and oxygen, and I'll need to change their signs. And then I will add all of these delta H's together. So let me take a quick peek at my other table and let's get some numbers. All right, I didn't make you watch me look everything up, but what I did, and I like doing my work this way, is I looked up each of these in the table and then I wrote the delta H of formation directly from the table. So in the table, H2O gas is negative 241.818. In the table, C2H4 is positive 52.26. So I like recording them directly as they appear in the table. And then to calculate the delta H overall for this reaction, the standard enthalpy change, I will add together all of the steps, I'll add together all of the formation reactions, and I'll have to remember to change the signs of the reactants because I'm actually flipping those reactions around. So essentially this is what I'll have. So I will have the 393.509 times 2, the 241.818 times 2, both of those are negative, and then I'll add to it the formation of C2H4 but I'll change the sign because I'm not actually forming C2H4, I'm, it's a reactant. And so this sign change, it's negative down here because that's the opposite of the sign in the table. Um, oxygen is, the oxygen enthalpy of formation is zero, so that's zero. And then I'll simply add all those together to get my answer. So the enthalpy change of the combustion of ethylene, this reaction here at the top, is negative 1322.914 kilojoules as written. Um, sometimes we'll report this, go ahead and report this as kilojoules per mole, uh, but it is the amount of energy in the form of heat that is given off as this reaction proceeds. It is exothermic, all combustion reactions are. And if you look in your textbook, we can kind of summarize this process as the delta H of an overall reaction is equal to the sum, that's the sigma, the sum of the enthalpies of formation of all the products minus the sum of the enthalpies of formation of all the reactants. Now this is exactly what we did. We added together the enthalpies of formations of all the products. You do have to remember to multiply by the stoichiometric coefficient. And then we subtracted the enthalpy of formation of the reactants. Subtracting something is the same thing as changing its sign, and so we do have the minus 52.26. If the enthalpies of formation of your reactants are negative to start with, when you subtract a negative, you get a positive. So you do have to watch your, your sign very, very carefully in this problem. But that's how you can calculate the enthalpy of formation of any reaction, as long as you've got enthalpies of formation tables that you trust, that you can use for everything in your reaction.